Hey everybody, welcome back to the channel. We are going to be looking at an interview of Jason Kelly, CEO of DNA, speak a little bit more about the differences between DNA, the uh, organism company, as they call themselves, and traditional pharmaceutical companies. I'm going to be reacting to an interview. It's a 30-minute interview, but I'm only going to be reacting to like four or five minutes of it uh, by Stockcast, so an awesome channel. I'll link them in the description, and you can check them out. And this is an interview where the CEO was kind of explaining the, the core thesis around their company and what differentiates them from the rest of the market and why they're in such a unique position to have a horizontal platform approach to building program programmable cells and DNA. So let's react to a couple of these minutes, and uh, we'll, we'll go a little bit more deeper from there. Makes sense to me. Well, I have to say is that when people looked at Ginkgo, there's a lot of people that, that just look specifically that you're just a pharmaceutical company. Yeah. You're, just, you're like a healthcare company, yeah. which is not the aspect in any shape or form. You're going for more than just that. And truthfully, you're wor working with Biogen. You're working with Motif. You're working with many companies, Bayer, Join Bio. But you're not just a health company. You're not, you, there's so many more aspects to you. So that's why you're more innovative and more disruptive than people really give you guys credit for. Yeah, so I think the reason for that is, is the history almost of the word biotech. Mm -hmm. so, so if you think about, I'll just give you a little bit of background, this kind of cool. Uh, so like the history of the pharmaceutical industry was, the, was the chem, came out of chemistry. Yep. Like Pfizer, these companies were chemical companies and then they basically took what our first drugs were, which were like plant extracts, mm -hmm. and then they used synthetic chemistry to make things like aspirin, your first like small molecule drugs. And that was the drug industry for years and your decades, all yeah. middle century. And then along 1978, there's the invention of what's called recombinant DNA, basically cutting and pasting DNA. So, so cutting a piece of DNA out of this organism and pasting it in over here. You can't change it, yeah. but you can cut it and paste it. And the company Genentech comes along. By the way, we have the, now the ticker. <laughs> we're getting the DNA ticker. It's the old ticker for Genentech. <laughs> So proud of this, yeah. Like when, go, when we complete the merger with uh, SRNG, it'll become DNA. But but uh, but Genentech comes along and, and they take the gene for human insulin and they paste it into bacteria, into E. coli, actually. Mm. And then they grow it up in a big tank and it makes human insulin. And they had to give it to diabetics. Right? My dad was a type one diabetic, so you know, he was he was he was, he was you know starting in his twenties. He was a, a, a diabetic as a kid, and uh, so he had to take pre-Genentech insulin, which was from pigs. You should extract it from pigs. Yeah, and had all these. This is really interesting to just understand that be before we had any type of programmable technology when it came to DNA and we had like we had to treat diabetics, we had to have insulin and we were getting the chemicals we needed for that from pigs. So the, the world has fundamentally evolved when it comes to understanding genomic sequencing and synthetic biology. And what Jason Kelly is talking about right now is things that have happened in the past that are not the same as they are now because we have the ability to program DNA. And so the, the, the way the world used to be and the sort of taste left in people's mouth when they think of a biotech company is drugs because a lot of these companies are rooted within chemicals, right? Pfizer, Moderna, they, they, they take chemicals and they make drugs out of that. DNA is not that company. And, and that is, I think, one of the biggest misconceptions around this company that really retail has, but not institutional. Institutional, you know, 90%, they have an inst uh, institutional vote of 90% 90 90 of institutional investors hold the stock. So really, it's just a question of if retail can understand what they actually do. Side effects and stuff. And then Genentech comes along like, no, no, we'll give you the real stuff. Mm. We'll give you human insulin. And, and then they said, oh, well, let's also do EPO for, you know, like these blood, you know, all the other, these protein drugs came along and that became the biotech industry. And it was pharmaceuticals, but it was the application of cutting and pasting DNA that enabled this whole new category where today now, like nearly half of the approved drugs, I think it's like 40%, are biotech drugs. Yeah. Okay, well, the low level technology was cutting and pasting DNA. It just happened that the first market, and the big one, was What's drugs. Mm -hmm. So we all think today when we see here biotech, we think drugs. Mm -hmm. But that just happened to be like the first killer app. <laughs> right, like, like in, in, you know, life-saving app, you know, right? But, but like the, the actual low-level technology is your ability to edit biology. Mm. And then so the drugs that were built were the apps, the YouTubes, the Instagrams, the Facebooks on top of the app store. But what matters is the store, the infrastructure that facilitates the ability for all these other programmable applications to be built on top of something. And so that's where the real value is. And that's what Jason Kelly here is talking about. And if Ginkgo can really be that, then, you know, that could be a big deal. And the first time it just showed off because all we could do was some stupid cut paste was human proteins. Does that make sense? And, and, that does make and so sense. So we're still stuck with that. When people hear biotech, they always think drugs, that's why. Mm. Right? But what they really should think is like programming organisms. Mm -hmm. And what could it do? Mm -hmm. And as we get so much better at it than we were in 1978, the markets are going to be well outside of pharma. Well, that's 
fair to say you guys pioneered this whole new section. You're the industry leader in it. For synthetic biology, I'd say at this point we're the industry leader. Yeah. Yeah. yeah and, and, and with this idea of you can use the same infrastructure to program a cell for any market. Right, like most of the other people in the space, they have a certain product they're going after. Mm -hmm. They are a drug company, or they are an ag product, or they want to make a you know food, you know, impossible burger. Like their their company is about the product, which is great. Mm -hmm. But when it comes to being about the kind of the operating system, the Amazon Web Service, you know, like the platform, we're I think we are the, the leader there for sure. Yeah. So that is the interesting element that I wanted to react to, at least from this part of the uh, the interview. The difference or the reason why biotech companies get a bad rap, which is, is warranted, is because they're taking drugs to market. And historically, they've been chemical companies. And those chemicals, at the end of the day, have different use cases. But the platforms in which those chemicals are built upon, the technology, the underlying foundation for those chemicals to even become successful in this day and age is starting to become programmable DNA, synthetic biology. And DNA seems to be one of the leaders in that space. Um, and that's exciting to me. I like platform-based approaches whenever I think about investing in a company. It's why I'm so heavily invested in Palantir. Uh, I see their platform as being something that a lot of governments and a lot of organizations and just uh, companies are going to be used to become more efficient. It's why I'm invested in SoFi. I see them as essentially an AWS of fintech. Their Galileo technology was going to allow a lot more financial technology companies in the future. Every time they process a payment for SoFi's technology to be the reason for why they're even able to process that payment through application programming interfaces by Galileo, which gives SoFi more business leverage and opportunity. And so I like platform-based approaches, genomic sequencing. There's so many different places this can go. There's so many different ways this can be implemented into the world. And so exciting to kind of see uh, a company at this stage, especially as the market's gotten beat down, still figure out a way to bring their product to market and have a working existing laboratory that allows all these different cell-based applications to grow. So those are my thoughts uh, on why people have a bad rap when they think of biotech companies, especially in the context of DNA, because they just don't understand DNA is not a biotech company in the context of drugs, but a biotech application that allows drugs to be able to be formed. And that's the main difference. Thank you so much for listening, watching. Check out the link in the description. You can sign up to my app for free audio content around DNA and a lot of other stocks. I'll see you guys in the next one.